What do you see, uh, you know, from the legislative standpoint? I mean, you mentioned this issue of revocation of mm -hmm. consent, and I know North Carolina really stands out in terms. Of, yes. I mean, to my knowledge, the only state currently in, in the only that that <laughs> where people aren't allowed to revoke consent. Um, in your conversations with lawmakers, what are the hurdles to some of these legislative changes? Um, so a couple things. I th I think when people think about sexual violence, they think about what if it were them, which interestingly enough, they don't really think about what if it were them as the survivor. Um, and so, so a lot of the feedback we got when we initially started to talk about this is a clear misunderstanding of what that meant. Um, but I also think that, quite frankly, we still have a huge misconception of what sexual violence is and how that's distinct and different from sex. Um, and unfortunately, as long as we continue to talk about sexual violence in the context of a consensual sex, I think it's very difficult for people to pull those apart when we're talking about statute. And that, that is also largely what I believe holds us back as a culture, is that sex is still very taboo and people somehow equate sexual violence as sex. And we're very clear to say that they are not the same thing. Um, and we should not even use language similarly when we're talking about sexual violence. So for us, when we hear people say, you know, the 35-year-old had sex with a 14-year-old, that's not sex. Um, that's sexual violence and it's defined in our statutes, but at the same time, we don't actually take into consideration what it means to withdraw that consent.